Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. Uh, I'm home. I have survived coronavirus another day. <laughs> Um, I can't say too much about where I work, but I work in a business where uh, food is a part of what we do in our business. So I've had a week from heck. Uh, everything's crazy. Uh, I'd love to just get a get a, a vacation and stay home, but someone's got to get the food from point A to point B. All right. So I got home ready to draw, and I wanted to listen to an audiobook. I'm not going to name the audiobook and the actor because I don't want to embarrass the actor. I did write a very negative review, so just in case anyone buys this audiobook from Audible, uh, hopefully that'll give you warning. And uh, I guess I'm making this little rant because uh, apparently <laughs> there are people who run whole audiobook companies and have a career in recording audiobooks <laughs> who haven't figured out <laughs> that that after a sentence you are supposed to pause. So I thought, let's make this a nice little, you know, nugget of wisdom for aspiring actors and YouTubers and audiobook recorders. You are supposed to pause after the sentence ends. <laughs> the reason you're supposed to pause is so that the listener can process the sentence that you have just said before you go on to the next sentence. Now, that wasn't the only annoying thing about this audiobook. Uh, the, the reader also had like this ten. There's this tendency for some book readers, they're either really good and they're really good at reading a story, or they think that an audiobook reader is supposed to be very, very serious all the time. So everything is, it was a dark and stormy night. And she went in and she felt happy. And her kid said hi. It, like, like, it doesn't matter if it's sad or if it's serious or if it's scary. They're always in this kind of like flat tone. Uh, the other thing, odd thing he would do is he would kind of like emphasize certain words, uh, which you normally do in a sentence. You emphasize the most important word of a sentence, but he would sort of like emphasize weird words or almost emphasize them as if it was really obvious he was trying to emphasize them. She put her book down. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of a thing. But the worst thing, of course, is no pauses, right? And uh, when someone's excited, like I'm excited right now, you start running your sentences together a little bit fast, but normally you like take a breath and slow down. And when you combined all of this together, it was this really surreal experience where she got into the car and saw, I, I can't even fake it. It's really it, like you would have to be trying your darndest to read a book this badly. I wonder if I've just got a book lying around. All right, I'm just going to like open up National Geographic here so I have some text and try to convey to you what this sounds like. Because once you hear it, it's easy. The oldest known root on the bird family tree is the raven size Archaeopteryx, a 150 million old animal that bore a telling mix of attributes, while all today's birds are toothless. Its sparted claws on its front limbs and a long bony tail. These traits are lost in birds and instead reveal close ties to its more reptilian cousins, such as the Velociraptus of Jurassic Park, famed by Dicheopterus, had characteristics of modern birds too. I am not kidding you. That is what it sounded like. And I waited like 10 minutes. I thought, okay, maybe that's like a weird sentence he read. So I don't want to judge him off of one sentence. And then a couple minute, a few seconds would go by. Another thing like that. A few seconds would go by. Another thing. The, we invented the period for a reason, aspiring actors. All right, I'm number one Marmaduke fan, and that's your voice acting tip for the day. Love you guys. Catch you later.